Thank you for joining us today at Mentor Wargaming Labs. Today we are going to be painting an Ash Waste Nomad. And I'm going to do a painting standard to get um, this guy battle ready, tabletop ready here. And by doing that, the idea is this will be a paint job to help you get the 10 Ash Waste Nomads that come in the Ash Waste box set done in one day. Um, so the idea is start at 7, probably wrap around 3 p.m. if you work consistently. Uh, there'll be some breaks as you wait for stuff to dry. Um, just a quick, easy paint job there and using primarily army painter paints. But first, let's talk about what we did use here. So primer was uh, Citadel Zandri Dust. Uh, then I used Army Painter's Necromancer Cloak, Desert Yellow, Field Gray, Ash Gray, Troll Claws, Skeleton Bone, Gun Metal, Dragon Red, and Wolf Gray. Used Vallejo's German Camouflage Beige, World War II. And then I used the Citadel Agrax Earthshade as a wash. And for the texture of the base and the ground, I used Ag uh, Citadel's Agrelin earth. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started on this guy. Now as you can see I have primed the model in Zandri dust and this is going to be a huge time saver for us. But now, let's see, I am going to grab some Army Painter Necromancer Cloak because I just love how it has kind of a faded black look to it. All right, now I am going to do all these containers. So I think these are like air filters and water containers for when they're traveling through the wastes. So those containers, the pipes that carry the, uh, whatever's in them around. And often what you see is the little pipes go up into their chests. And I also do the masks and the breathing aperture. Okay. I do this little just give this little knob here a circle. And go ahead and do the piping along the side of the mask. And I'll also do the backpack. I just do everything in the backpack. Next we're going to take some leather brown, and I use this on all the little pouches. We're going to do the boots. See sometimes you find these little extra plates right there, so we're not going to do those in brown. But I'll do the strap that's holding this plate on in brown. Let's see, you got another pouch here. Now you'll see all these little bands running around, kind of like tying stuff together. I'm going to do those in the brown. I'm going to do little bindings here. Let's see, he's got, you don't always see it on all the models, but they've got little belts and little straps that hold their backpack on. Then I'm going to depict this as a little ammo roll, like a little bandolier, so I'll paint that brown. So you're just 
can do these as a real quick sandy depiction of a model. I'm not going to do a refined paint job. Let's get this backpack strap. Just reach down in there and pull back across. Alright. Yep, get one little strap there. Now we're going to paint this little banner that he wears. So I'm going to take some Army Painter Desert Yellow. This one, depending on how thin your bottle of Army Painter is, you might put on two coats, depending on how much you want it to pop out. Now the only part we'll have to watch out for is we painted some of the bindings holding this down. The brown, we really don't want to cover that up. I want it to be distinct. Oh, just watch it up here. Now next we're going to paint this little mass of fur and I like the models with that. So I'm going to take some Army Painter Field Gray, and this will serve as a nice little dark accent color. Just on these furry portions here. Now I'm going to paint the little knee pad there, and that little armored chin pad, and for that I'm going to use Ash Gray. I think it complements it well enough. Just glide the brush over the top of the feature. Now we're going to do his rifle there, and we're going to take some Army Painter Troll Claws. So the Army Painter line has a lot of adjacent colors here. Just carefully move around the hands. I'm just going to put one thick coat of it down. Your part is getting the butt of the rifle without hitting anything else. Now we're going to let that dry, and all this stuff up here should be dry enough for us to use skeleton bone. And that's my preferred color because I imagine these are some type of bone to hold their banners up. It makes a good contrast to the desert yellow, but it's also camouflagey enough. So I imagine the bone holds up this sheet, which is wrapped around their bodies, so they can lay down in the sand and camouflage away. Alright, so this is an easy one. I also have this little bone element right here. So I'm trying to get that. And since this is a, a sand one, I'm going to paint it 
Looks like he's covered in sand. We'll do that in a later stage. It can be a little bit quicker and messier with this paint job. Now our model's coming together here. So I'm going to take some gunmetal. This will really make the model contrast. But just for the magazine, so the gunmetal will pretty much be the weapon. And I just pick out different elements of the weapon on different models. That way they're not too samey. And you'll notice a lot of these models will actually be wearing armored breastplates. So we're just going to stick the brush under there. And reach down the top. This you have to be a little bit more careful on. Because the other sandy colors you know, kind of blend together. Alright, can't we reach the plate? His cowl's in the way. Okay. Just right there. Okay. So now let's pick out a couple more elements in the weapon system. Let's do that. Do some of the optics. Alright, now we're going to let that dry. I think our model's dry enough here. So I'm going to take some Agrax Earthshade because I have too much of this. And almost spilled that model. Alright. So I got a brush. It used to be a nice straight pointy brush until I damaged it. And we're just going to cover this model with a layer of Agrax or shade. And this will actually start blending a lot of these colors together. Give it that same dirty look. And then we're going to let this sucker dry for quite a while. Since I'm going to have to wait for this guy to dry, and that's going to take a while, I'm going to go ahead and put down some Agrellin Earth. Now, what I normally do is the way I structure my painting days is, oh, don't forget, got my little fancy tool here. I paint, and I schedule all, I try to get it so that all my uh, washes and earth technicals that I do for basing all happen at the end of the painting session. And then normally I like to do that in the morning. And then I'll come back, if I'm lucky enough to get an evening painting session, everything will be nice and dry. As you can see, I, I slop a lot of this stuff on here. Because when you lack talent, just apply a lot of it for <laughs> paint. dry and I'm going to come back later in the day and of course that's the advantage when you do like 10 of these all at the same time and they're off camera and just pick up uh, from where you left off now the model's all dried from the base to his whole little body there now we're gonna take some German camouflage beige World War II from Vallejo now in all my ash waste models, this is the thing that I use to tie them together. I use a dry brush and I create a look of dust on them. So, got a little bit of paint on there, brush most of it off, and just go around, 
quickly, and this will grab some of the highlights. Man, it'd help if I showed you. Okay. Sorry, new setup. And this just makes everything look a little bit dirtier. There's living out here in New Mexico. Sand gets everywhere. And it's constant and pervasive. See, and this helps bring out the little cords on the bottom here. Lightly across the field gray. And then we should do his shoes. And then we'll do the base here, because this is where the dust comes from, is the ground. So a bit on base here. Okay. Call that a day on the dry brushing. Now we're down to doing some details here. Get this thing battle ready. So let's go with some Dragon Red, and I'm going to go for my tiniest brush. And do is get a little drop of paint on there, and very carefully lower it into the eye socket there. Best a drop of paint. There we go. Give him that creepy look right there. All right now we're gonna do last bit of detailing work. So I'm gonna get some army painter wolf gray. And see, there's this little tube back here. So to add a spot of color, what I'd like to do is I just paint that the wolf gray and make it look like there's a liquid flowing through there through some tubing. I imagine that's their water recycling system, similar to like Dune or something. And they urinate and then recycle the water. So give them a little color. And then just to show it's a little refre reflective, I go back to the wolf gray. And while it's still a little wet, just a little streak up top there. Give it a little sense of reflection, but dull. All right, and now we're gonna call it a day on this model. Now, using the standard, like I said, uh, we can, if we spend all day on it, we can pump out our 10 guys if we start like seven in the morning and go probably around two, 3 p.m. on all 10 guys if you work consistently on it and get into a good uh, battle ready condition. All right, well, thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs and we'll see you next time.